What is going on, everybody? A little U.S. Open, go low, Pinehurst. We're off and running, baby. We only get four of these where everyone's playing together, and now we got it. Scotty Scheffler wins at Memorial. Heavy favorite coming in. John Rahm, big news today, withdrew W. Deed uh, on Tuesday with... Some might call it athlete's foot. He's got an infection or something on his toes, uh, his pinky toe, his other toe. I, I don't know, but he he's Sayonara John Rom. so we'll dive into that. Um, does Scotty need a rival? Because, you know, part of becoming a superstar in any sport is having a rival. And right now, does that guy exist? And I, I think the guy most suited to be that guy is someone no one's really talking about. And uh, obviously... Father's Day usually falls on, or doesn't usually, always falls on the Sunday of the U.S. Open. Uh, Tiger had some, I thought, some cool comments with Charlie uh, a couple weeks ago when Bob McIntyre won in Canada. I, I got sick the next week, so I, I didn't do a go low, but I thought that was one of the cooler moments as someone that plays, grew up playing golf, you know, because of my dad and, and with my dad. And then we'll also do a little uh, mailbag at Golopod is the Instagram. At Golopod is the Instagram. So uh, fire in those DMs. We got some questions, and I'll I'll hit them up in, in this podcast. But if you want to go to an event, if you want to go like Pinehurst, obviously you know you probably can't make it. But if you could, and you thought ahead, and you want to go to something really fun, I got you covered because Game Time is the official ticketing partner of this podcast. And uh, I looked. The other day, I mentioned this. Zach Bryan is coming to Arizona in December, and I'm not a huge planner. I'm not someone I, I kind of fly by the seat of my pants, which she doesn't like because when you when you live with a planner, you know you can butt heads a little bit. But one thing I've gotten better at planning is events because game time. Whoever I want to see, whether it's a concert, whether it's a game, just search, find the price point where you want to sit, the sight lines. Very, very easy to use. I know a lot of you have used it. Cannot recommend it enough. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code GOLO for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. An account, create an account, and redeem the code GOLOW for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. <laughs> Okay, before we dive into Scotty, the big news today was John Rahm withdrew. He withdrew last week in Houston, uh, I think a couple holes, maybe six holes into the second round, and he showed up today at a press conference with a shoe and a sandal with some Band-Aids over his toes, and now is not playing in the U.S. Open. And there's no way to sugarcoat this. It has been a disastrous season for John Rahm. Obviously, Liv has impacted different guys different ways. Last year, Kepka wins a major and was right in the hunt to win the Masters as well. So he's a guy who clearly can get up for tournaments unfazed. Bryson is the ideal candidate because he's kind of a lone wolf. He can do his YouTube stuff, and we'll dive into him last uh, later this podcast. I, I think he has a very, very good chance to win this week. Uh, but you look at John Rahm, a year ago today, he was essentially the best player in the world. He had won three times on the PGA Tour. Then he won the Masters. And coming into this tournament, he had previously won it in 2021. And we were all looking on this guy going, hey, if Scotty figures out his putting, we got a rivalry with this elite international Spaniard, complete ass kicker, multiple major winner. This guy, Scotty Scheffler, who looks fantastic. He just got to figure out the putter. Already has a major championship. And then at the end of the season, John Rahm went to live. And his comments since, you know, I don't think he loves it. Clearly doesn't like the format, but they put a number in front of his face that he could not turn down. Something, for example, the Lakers did not do. The more I've had time to marinate on the Lakers offer, $70 million is a boatload of money to 99.99% of people. And all of us are not turning down $70 million. But in that situation, not a great offer. Anytime you put out a number in front of a human, 
where no is a possibility, the number is not high enough. And that's the way it was early on for John Rahm. And then they got up. It's reported $300, $400 million. I don't give a shit who you are unless you're Tiger Woods and a billionaire. You're not turning that down. Ultimately, he did not. But this season is kind of an embarrassment. Now, I'm not one. I was just sick. You never know a different guy's pain tolerance, what they're going through. Uh, But, you know, this feels very golf. A couple people texted me from the grounds. They're like, he just withdrew with athlete's foot? Uh, Clearly, he's in pain. But this is where the bar Tiger set was so high. Tiger has withdrawn from tournaments over the course of his career. But how many times have we seen him hit the ground because his knee or back's not working? So, like, this sucks. And I think the reason this sucks is we lost a guy who was an elite player, and he now feels kind of irrelevant. And the problem is, he was someone that was very predicated on the juice of these tournaments. If you lost watch last week, and I did, uh, Scotty Scheffler win the Memorial, it was pretty sweet. Liv can't sniff that. There is no way for them to replicate that. And John Rahm thrived in that environment and became the best player in the world and what looked like a guy that could be like the next Seve. A guy win six, seven majors, a guy win, you know, 30, 35 tournaments and just have an all-time career. And maybe whenever this merger comes to fruition, which... I ain't waiting for it anymore. We get back the juice of this player. But last year, for example, he wins the Tournament of Champions, chases down Colin Morikawa, who had a big lead. Then he wins at Amex, kind of a joke tournament. Then he's third at the Waste Management, wins at Riv, wins the Masters. He's top 10 in the U.S. Open. He finishes second in the British Open. It just has a fantastic season. And now we get a guy who's struggling to make the cut at majors, and has to withdraw because of some weird foot injury. Obviously, injuries you can't control. It happens. Zalatoris had a back. Kepka had a knee. Shit happens. But there's no sugarcoating this, given the star that has become Scotty Scheffler, a guy who's having a Tiger Woods season. Forever was like, can we compare this to Tiger Woods? There's no disputing it anymore. (laughs) This many wins, this early, a major, heavy favorite. It would be a shocking if... uh, Achievement of someone else wins this weekend. And this guy, who was his equal, is now just irrelevant. There's no way around it. It's sad. It sucks. And just as a fan of golf, like this is a guy. There, There's 10 guys entering this tournament who can win. I, I know there are 150 plus in the field. There are 10 guys who have a legitimate chance to win. I would imagine, obviously we don't know it has to play out. Eight to nine of them are top 15, 20 players in the world. Then there'll be a random guy. But this is big hitters, elite. I don't mean necessarily hitting it far. I just mean big time players only. And that's where John Rahm was. And now, a year later, he doesn't feel like that. And thank God for Scotty Scheffler. Uh, I said this before and I'll say it again. Nothing awful happened beside the person losing their life, which he had nothing to do with, at the PGA Championship. I do believe, because Scotty's boring. Like, if you just YouTube Tiger Woods, it's remarkable to watch. His animation, how excited he gets, the miracles he's pulling out of his you-know-what. Tiger did not hit the ball straight. So a lot of his great shots are like hitting it around trees, hitting it out of the bunker over trees. Not just like, oh, he's 175, he's going to knock it three feet. Obviously, he can do that. But most of his memorable moments throughout his career, a crazy flop shot off the green at Memorial was just the highest level of how did he pull that off? Phil Mickelson had a lot of that. Jordan Spieth in his like two-year greatness run was basically Phil just the right-handed version. It was just sweet to watch. Scotty's kind of boring. Now he's kicking everyone's ass consistently. And I think it would be, from a gambling perspective, he's going to win this tournament. It would be shocking if he doesn't win this tournament. And he would be in the midst of the greatest single season we've seen since Tiger Woods. I don't even think that's really debatable. We've seen guys since then win multiple majors in the same season, but not have the wins. 
I mean, he won the players, he won at Bay Hill, and he won at Memorial. And I think we all feel he's going to win the Tour Championship and he'll probably win another tournament non-major throughout the rest of the season. This guy's going to end up with, he currently has $24 million this year in on-course earnings. Last year, Hovland had an incredible season. He made $36 million. Scotty Scheffler is on track, I think, give or take, to have a $50 million on the course. That doesn't count the his other sponsors. Obviously, Nike, because of the level in which he's playing, I would imagine he's having a $20 million Nike season. This guy's going to make $70, $80 million this season. So one thing some of these guys benefited from, because the live guys took off, that we said, how are they ever going to make that type of money? And Scotty Scheffler and Hovland are proving if you play well on the PGA Tour, you can have a 24-month stretch where you make $100 million and you don't have to play all these stupid tournaments that, let's face it, none of these live guys feel very excited to play. They're doing it because they got paid, which is the reason a lot of people in America work, because you're paying me to do it. And for a long period of time, it felt like guys like to compete. Obviously, in the NFL and the NBA, they get paid a lot. But when the ball tips in big games or the ball is snapped or kicked off, there's an excitement level as a competitor. Liv does not have that. The PGA Tour still brings that to the table. And just, I'm an independent consumer. I just like watching fun shit. I'm all into the NHL playoffs. I am glued into the Stanley Cup. I have a little money dabbled on Edmonton. But it's just a fantastic product. The level in which they compete, the intensity, how much you know it means, the history of it. No different than the NBA Finals. I don't watch as much NBA now as I did throughout the majority of my life. But the playoffs still matter. I I know what's on the line. I know the history of being a Finals MVP, winning a ring, what that means for guys' career, what it means to not win a ring. And that's what you watch Memorial, you know what's on the line. You know Tiger won there five times. You know it's Jack Nicholas's tournament. And you watch Scotty just embracing all this and playing at the level in which he's playing. But like I said, that arrest in Louisville, I, I truly is the best thing that ever happened to him. Because he's not that interesting of a guy. And really, his play, he's not that animated. He's not doing crazy fist pumps. He's not dropping F-bombs. He's not must-watch in terms of all the extracurricular stuff. But he's must-watch in terms of now he's winning at the rate because we love winners in America. And when you add in the arrest that it looked like it was going to derail, I don't know, something, and it didn't really at all. (laughs) And I bet on him two weeks later when Davis Riley, where were they playing in Texas, had a career week. And Scotty was still right there, finished second. So it, it's been really, really entertaining to watch. And um, I, I think his legend grew. And now we can laugh at it because of that mugshot, because they put him in an orange jumpsuit. And then he continues to answer the bell. This is not like Michael Jordan was the best player. And his team's really good. For the most part, he's going to win if he plays well. Golf's not like that. You're, you're playing 150 people. And if you have one bad round of the four rounds, it's really easy to just finish seventh, even if you're Tiger Woods or Arnie Palmer or Jack Nicholas or Nick Faldo or whoever. And every fucking week, it's like, this guy's going to win. This guy's going to win. This guy's going to win. Sometimes I laugh when people talk about the odds. Like, you know, Tiger's odds in 2001, we did not. I, I consumed sports. I followed sports religiously. Obviously, gambling is legal now, so we talk about it much differently. People were not gambling. I mean, you had to be a true, true degenerate Billy Walters. Gambling now, the accessibility, the the odds over the last, I would say, decade, but really five, six years, to me, the odds mean a lot more because the way we're discussing it. And this guy going into majors is three to one. We're like, yeah, probably right. Like, would it be crazy if you put him two to one? Like, what is the number? You couldn't put them minus 100, right, or or minus 110 because it's still a golf tournament. But he is creeping closer and closer to basically being a one-to-one favorite to win a golf tournament against 150 other people. 
where elite players are 16 to 1, 20 to 1, 25 to 1. What this guy doing, what this guy is doing right now is just remarkable. I mean, it, it is to me, it's must watch TV. And I think the arrest kind of brings in the casual fan because his name recognition. He's not Caitlin Clark or Patrick Mahomes in terms of name recognition. But I think if you're a casual guy, you're like, I'm not a big golf guy, but I'll I'll pay attention to some majors. You know exactly who Scotty Scheffler is, and you know exactly kind of what's going on right now, that essentially he wins every single week. Now, part of to grow this brand, you need a rival. Tiger's a once in a hundred year player. Whether he had a rival or didn't, it wasn't going to matter. He was a comet ship on his own. For the most part, players need someone that is at least viewed as a foe, if not an equal. And right now, Scotty does not have that. Colin Morikawa, whatever he did early on this season to figure it out, he looks freaking awesome. He was awesome at Memorial. He was awesome at the PGA Championship. He was awesome at the Masters. He looks fantastic. I I think he is an auto top five, top 10 bet this week. He is Taylor. He could win this tournament. But if Scotty's right there, you're like, he's not going to beat Scotty Scheffler. Xander Schauffler, who has had an elite career, finally got over the hump at Valhalla, is having statistically and you could argue the best year of his career. Another guy, I think an auto top 10, top five bet. Are either one of those guys going to be Scotty's rival? Don't really see it. Not saying those guys can't win and have continue to have great careers and even win another major or two. But Tiger had Phil, who I think when you look back, you go, I don't know what, where Phil ranks. You know, Tiger, Jack, one, two in some order. And then there's a group of five or six guys. I Phil's a top 10 player of all time. And you could argue he's closer to five than he is 10. But the rivalry, those two guys, it was a rivalry more by, yes, yeah, Tiger and Phil, but Tiger dominated him. But Phil was like a worthy, worthy foe. And I think Ernie Els, I would throw him right up there. I actually think the guy, and this is the sad part about the division in golf, is Bryson DeChambeau. Because one thing Phil had was like, Phil was pretty famous. So to have like a legit foe at the highest level of pro sports, that guy's got to be pretty famous, right? Larry and Magic. Michael kind of went through a rotation of them, but LeBron and Curry, uh, Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. Forever it was Manning and Brady. I think Bryson has a chance to be the most famous golfer. I'm not saying better than Scotty, but his fame, dude's a killer. This guy, if it was, uh, if he was an NFL player, we talk about Bryson DeChambeau like the number one high school recruit, the number one college player, and has come into the NFL and dominated and gone to Pro Bowls constantly. He obviously won a U.S. Open, not the best U.S. Open. It was basically just hit it straight a million feet and jump, pump wedges onto the green. But to me, Bryson's more closely a four or five major win guy than he is a one major win guy. The other thing I think he's kind of become comfortable with who he is, he's nerdy, didn't have a lot of friends on the PGA Tour. A lot of people, I think, rumors were people didn't like him very much. Whether he was a bad guy, immature guy, whatever, that's a fact. And now it feels like he's relaxed a little bit, but he's still an elite player. And Liv, whether he played on Liv, whether he played on the Corn Ferry Tour, whether he played on the Asian Tour, I don't think Bryson would be faced. Because... He loves golf to his soul a lot like Phil, a lot like Tiger Woods, a lot like Scotty Scheffler. They are addicts. Like the reason Patrick Mahomes is so good, obviously he's physically gifted. He's a 24-7 football addict. Same thing with Peyton Manning, same thing with Tom Brady, same thing with Drew Brees, same thing with Christian McCaffrey, same thing with LeBron James, same thing with Steph Curry. This is not uh, just, yeah, we do this for a job. We make a lot of money. No, this is a deep, driven passion of mine. And the other thing with Bryson is he's become a showman. And really, since he got big and was sucking down all those, uh, you know, the protein shakes and the peanut butter sandwiches and just put on an extra 30 pounds and he starts vomiting over the water, pointing at the sky. So I think Bryson figured something out. Whether you like him, whether you hate him, whether you think he's a nerd or whatever. 
you are dialed in when he's playing. And I like him a lot this week. And I would love, I mean, I'd pay for it to get these two guys in the mix on Saturday and Sunday. Now, this tournament is, from all accounts of everyone on the ground, is going to be really hard. The greens look like they're concrete. Obviously, there's not rough at this course like there is at traditional golf courses, but there's the native land. Uh, you can miss it into weird spots, and it can become very difficult. If you hit fairways, it's a second-shot golf course. But it's also pretty long, like it's 7,600 yards. And Scotty Scheffler hits long irons really well. Bryson DeChambeau, elite at it. Colin Morikawa, pretty freaking good. Same thing with Xander Shoffley. To me, that's the group I'm betting on. I have a ton of... The problem is, for me to get my rocks off, I'd have to put a couple grand on Scotty at 3-1. to one, Right? So I was like, you know... I'm going to parlay him with a lot of people. And I have a million parlays mixed up with Scotty and Colin and Bryson and Xander and, and even a little Fleetwood as top 10s and top 20s. Hideki's another guy. Elite ball striker. Fantastic short game. Going to be in the mix. So th- this is going to be a big-name tournament. Obviously, it's going to be shocking if Scotty doesn't win. But... I think this is, and hopefully so, where the kind of rivalry begins with Scotty and Bryson. Because I just, I don't I don't think it's doing it for the casual with Morikawa and Xander, despite how great those players are. Bryson kind of evokes emotion deep in your soul when you watch him. If you like sports, you're like, I kind of want to watch this. Something's there. Something's going on. And sometimes athletes just have that. When I was a kid, like, I'm not a big tennis guy. But and I didn't know I was going to be bald at the time, even though my entire family didn't have a blade of hair on top of their ha- uh, head. I loved Agassi. Something about Agassi. Why? Because you watched them. He just created emotion inside you. And we've seen it forever with football and basketball players. Same with baseball players when I was younger. But in these individual sports, y- you need some characters. And to me, Bryson is the ultimate mix of Character, weird, out there, unlike anyone else, and an elite player. So I hope Bryson brings his A game. He has a ton of momentum coming into this. Played well at Augusta. Played awesome at the PGA. Um, And like I said, I I don't think he's phased by the irrelevancy of these lived golf tournaments. I I don't think he's phased at all. Now, I I don't, you know, there's a lot of other names out there. Rory, count me out. Though, love is not dead. I just saw they're going to reconcile him and his wife when it comes to uh, their divorce. So no longer a divorce. Kepka, I, I hammered Kepka at the uh, at some of the earlier majors. Like I- I'm out. I'm just not going to do it. Not saying that he can't do it, but I- I- I'm not going to mess around with that. And uh, it's sad. I mean, DJ's like 75 or 80 to one, but should be fun. Should be fun. So I. I from a recommendation standpoint of gambling, I think if you want some action on Scotty, like you can put a hundred bucks Scotty to win and then parlay some top fives and top tens with the Xanders, with the Morikawas, with the Brysons, with the Hideki's, with the Fleetwoods. This is a ball strikers golf course. So I need guys from 180 yards, 190 yards, 200 yards. They can pelt the middle of the green because there are a lot of runoffs on this golf course. You get put in some weird spots. Hovland is an interesting guy. Is a short game good enough? Uh, but he's definitely shown some signs of life. He, he, he'd definitely be a wild card for me. If you want to put him in some parlays, I, I wouldn't be against that at all. But like I said, overall, have a hard time seeing Scotty not win this tournament. We're this close to crowning an NBA champ. And with the action heating up on the court, it's even hotter at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. And DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered every step of the way with same-game parlays, live betting, odds boosts, and so much more. Don't miss out as the NBA postseason winds down. It's super easy to just get started with DraftKings if you're a first-timer. Try betting on something like a team to win. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook app, select your team, and place your first bet. It's that simple. And if you're new to DraftKings, you got to check this out. New customers bet 5 bucks to get 150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the code JOHN. That's code J-O-H-N for new customers. Get 150 in bonus bets 
when you bet just five bucks. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. I think the cool part about golf, for most of us, we start because our dad takes us. I mean, the first time you usually play golf is playing with your dad. And it's a powerful connection. And as someone that lost his dad, sometimes I, I get kind of emotional in golf tournaments when you know, you win a tournament and one of the first people you see after is your parents and you hug your dad. And it's why I always, you know, I think it's cool. Justin Thomas and his father, Xander and his father, the, the relationship you have, a lot of these guys, their their coach ends up being his father. I mean, the most famous duo of all time is, is Earl and Tiger, which, you know, Earl got him into the game, but Earl was always smart, like gave him other coaches, like never tried to be his swing coach, was really more of his mental warfare coach. And I, I tweeted this out a couple months ago, or maybe I Instagram commented and a bunch of people were like, what are you talking about? Charlie Woods, his experience of Tiger as he gets into his mid-teens, like obviously he saw him win in 2019, the Masters and that big hug, and that was really cool. But now that he's become a competitive young golfer and obviously loves the game, practices with his dad, his dad is nowhere near, obviously. I, I don't expect him to ever be competitive again. He does look cool, like Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays of the practice rounds, but I, I have no expectations for Tiger. But for Charlie to be able to see firsthand how hard his dad works at this point in time of his career and then be at these tournaments, see the reverence all these elite guys have for his father, it's got to be a really, really powerful thing. Because Charlie will never get to experience what Tiger looked like in 2002 or 2000 or 2005, obviously. I mean, you can watch it on YouTube, but I say it all the time. If you're ever going to argue about somebody in sports, whether it be your dad or whether it be about someone, if you don't experience it, you know, past like 13, 14 years old, it's hard to go back on YouTube. Like, I, I can't describe John Elway in his prime or Magic Johnson and Larry Bird in their prime. I can watch YouTubes and tell you stats and know like from other people talking and read books. But like if you live through Michael Jordan, if you live through Tiger Woods, if you live through Manning and Brady, you can argue that till I'm blue in the face. And one thing I always respect about guys is Tiger does not need to be doing this at all. He's a billionaire. His accomplishments speak for themselves. Yet he keeps trying. <laughs> Maybe it's he's bored. But Charlie gets to have a firsthand look, and I, I do think it'll benefit him. Who knows how good he'll end up being. But it's definitely like, I'm a sap for that. I think it's really, really cool to watch. I was sick after the McIntyre uh, Canadian win. I, I thought that was one of the more cool moments. And that's, again, I, I'm not just trying to shit on Liv, because I really don't even care about Liv. But that's what the PGA Tour brings to the table. That moment with his father caddying is as cool as it gets. I, I mean, that that was as powerful a moment as those guys hugging his dad saying that he cuts grass for a living and McIntyre saying that this guy got me into golf. He He's the reason I'm here. And to win that moment, McIntyre could go on one day and win a major. He could go on and win another Ryder Cup a, as a teammate. I, I don't think anything will be able to duplicate that feeling of doing it with his father. Obviously, it's his first PGA Tour win, but that's stuff you write in a storybook. And I think a huge part of golf, uh, and a lot of you guys listening that you know are my age, give or take, in your 30s or 40s, have young children, it's just something you can do with your son or daughter. And the cool thing is you're able to do that till you die. Because golf is really the only sport that if you can walk and you're semi-healthy, like you can be playing into your mid-70s, 80s. Like you're you're not playing pickup hoops at 60 years old. You're not you're not playing tennis at 60. You can play the fat man's tennis, pickleball, which I think is the most overrated sport in the history of America. But golf's something that is pretty special that way. And uh I, I I'm a sucker for any father-son related golf moment. And I I love I'm obviously a big Tiger guy, but I, I think this Charlie just having him around is has is been really, really cool to watch. Uh, okay, let's answer a couple questions on at go low a pod Instagram. We will start with Gus. When people ask for course recs in Scottsdale, tell them to check out Kierland. Totally agree. Kierland 
He is behind a hotel. I think it's JW or it's a really nice hotel, not nice Hyatt or something. And uh, it's it's much more open. I played there with my brother last year. I think it's just it's just an easy. There's not as much desert lining. You can pump it into other fairways. You got you got a lot of room. You got a lot of room, and that's something sometimes with golf in Arizona, specifically the Scottsdale area. Depending on where you play, like you spray it around a little bit, you're with the rattlesnakes. You're like, I'm not even looking in those bushes. So Kirlin is definitely a cool course. And if you come in the summer in Arizona, golf's relatively cheap. Legend Trail played there as well. Much more kind of a little tighter, but it's it's a cool track. Cool little area. It's North Scottsdale played there. Rancho Minana. Super short and narrow in the hills. Never played there before. Legend Trail, though, I, I played there several years ago. And uh, I'm with you. I thought it was... That was a cool track. Okay. Uh, for the mailbag, I have an idea for international golf. What if they got to a four year cycle? Year one, the Olympics. Year two, the President's Cup. Year three, the Ryder Cup. Year four, a new cup between Europe and the world. This way, we get to see more of these players against each other, more courses, new rivalries, while also giving the U.S. a break. Every once in a while. The captain for a team is the captain for the whole cycle, which makes it more of a real position and something they have to take seriously. And finally, the captain of the team not playing gets to set up the course for the other two. This eliminates the massive data advantages we've seen in recent Ryder Cups and President's Cups. The problem with this is there's no connection the Ryder Cup, I'm pretty sure, is an independent entity. And the President's Cup is, I'm pretty sure, owned by the PGA of America. They have no connection to the Olympics. So I don't think they really care. Right? If you run the President's Cup and it's every two years, well, this is an Olympic year. Well, that's I don't give a shit. So I, I think the hard, this is speaks to the overall issues we have in golf is there so much division? This guy wants this. This guy wants this. This tour wants to do this. This it, It's why I think they've struggled with this merger. You know, Rory has these ideas. These other guys don't want to leave America. Like, Liv doesn't want to play that many events. They only want to play 54 holes. I think it's very, very difficult to get individuals on the same page. It's why it's much easier in the NBA or the NFL. You're all under the same umbrella. So even when there are some differing of opinions, it's all for the better good, you know, the long-term outlook of the business. Where it's like, you know, I got some business over here. I want to do this. I want to play these tournaments. I I think you're kind of on to something. I, I, I think, though, it's a Hail Mary in terms of, we've seen how difficult it is to get anyone to agree. It, it doesn't work. They, they don't agree on anything. And I, I think the big struggle, one thing Liv has done a good job of is go international. But guess what? The American players do not want to play international. They're too rich. It's too big a pain in the ass. I mean, they'll do it when the British Open is going down and they'll play the Scottish before. But like, they don't want to do a random trip to Australia in November. They just don't. And that's the problem. Now you can argue is like JT and Spieth and Cantlay and some of these guys, like, do they matter that much? Like who wants to go, go. We've seen like the fields and the names matter, but not getting them to go because there aren't like that Canadian open. That place was rocking that, that place. The, 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 they should have multiple Canadian tournaments. They should have, they should definitely have whenever this is figured out something in Australia, you want to do stuff where things matter, right? Why does football thrive in the South? Because they love it. So golf, which is played worldwide, why wouldn't you want to play in the places that love golf? It's not even about, quote-unquote, growing the game. It's just an awesome television experience. It's why the Ryder Cup pops so much on TV, because of the passion in the stands. It's one thing we learned in 2020 and 2021. If you don't put people in the stands, it's not as good of a product. It's, it's actually a pretty awful product. No way around it. 
when people are in the stands and the place is rocking, it's fucking sweet. I'm not the biggest UFC guy, but you watch one of these UFC, uh, you know, fights, and the place, 18,000 people, the, the walkouts, you're like, God, this feels huge. And that's what you get at some of these events. The majors have always had that. But I don't know. I, 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 I don't feel very confident or bullish on where we're headed because of just the natural division of the way these guys are wired. And they're all so rich now. It's, it's hard to get super rich independent guys to get on the same page. It's, it's a major, major challenge as we've learned. Uh, Hey, John, I don't usually reach out, but after listening to your most recent episode, I just want to thank you. Your take on Grayson was raw, intriguing, thought-provoking. In my line of work, I deal with a lot of people that deal with mental health issues, alcoholism being purely a symptom. You captured this very well, and I feel truly uh, happy, respectful. I also love the points on Bryson and couldn't agree more. Couldn't stand him on the PGA Tour. I'm a Brooks fan, but every major the last two years feeling what could have been. Thanks for the entertainment. Yeah, I saw they, you know, Grayson got a locker at the U.S. Open. Obviously, he would have been there having won earlier this year. And um, I, I think I read last week, where were they last week? At Memorial, they did like a celebration of life. I think I, I could be wrong. It was on the first tee. And all the players and caddies and everyone went out there. It was like a Monday or Tuesday. And, and Scotty talked. And they don't have video of it or anything. I, just, I read an article and Scotty was in tears half the time. It's just sucks. Big time sucks. Well, I guess, I guess uh, we'll, we'll end on that. So uh, enjoy the U.S. Open. And like I said, I, I think if you, everyone likes Scotty to win. But if you want a little better odds, you know, I, I think parlaying him with Colin to top five or top ten, uh, Bryson, Hideki, Fleetwood, Xander, th those are my names. Uh, because I want ball strikers. I want guys who have had success in majors and guys that are playing well right now. Um, I, I'd be stunned if Xander's not in the top 10. I, I, I think it's very probable uh, that Morikawa finishes, if he doesn't win, finishes second or third. I actually dabbled a little on Bryson to win. I, I think he could win, and I, I think he's going to be in the mix. So I love these majors. Uh, I, I love the U.S. Open uh, when they go to – courses that you know we don't get to see very often i've never played pinehurst but i am i'm i'm excited I, I like carnage too i like it to be very challenging so let's uh let's have a good couple days and good luck making some money